Hello, everyone, and welcome to the presentation today on how do I prepare for my dissertation for management students. Uh, today, we have with us um, Lee Hitchcock um, and Sharon Mouse, and we will be uh, facilitating this presentation for you. The dissertation comprises of eight modules, which equates to 120 credits and must be successfully completed before the dissertation takes place. The dissertation modules start on the first Thursday of every month. And this is except in January 2013, where it will be taking place on the second Thursday, the 10th of January. The self-enrolment is not currently possible for dissertation modules. The enrolment needs to be requested via your student support manager. And if you do have a start date in mind, you can contact your student support manager. So what is a dissertation? Uh, the dissertation is a high standard of academic work in your preferred research area. If you're following a specialization, the dissertation must focus on this field. And the dissertation due date is always the 28th of the ninth month. So a dissertation that starts on Thursday, February 7, 2013, will be due on October 28, 2013. Uh, your dissertation will account for one third of the total number of credit points for your program. So an entire master's program is 180 credit points, and your dissertation comprises of 60 of these. And before enrolling in your dissertation, you must complete eight modules, which is 120 credit points. So it is not possible for you to start your dissertation if you have not successfully completed all eight modules. OK, the dissertation readiness course. So you'll be enrolled into this during the sixth module, and you will be notified by email regarding this enrollment. If you're participating in your sixth module and you don't see the enrollment in the My Courses area of Blackboard, you should contact your student support manager for this. And this is a, a visual overview of what the, um, you know, the preparatory phase before dissertation looks like. So you'll be enrolled in your sixth module, and then you will also be enrolled in the dissertation readiness course, um, uh, after which you will then be enrolled for your seventh and your eighth module. Now, the enrollment for dissertation readiness course should be done uh, automatically, uh, but do let your student support manager know if it doesn't show up. Um, and we strongly recommend that students complete the dissertation readiness course before they start on their actual dissertation. OK, more about the dissertation readiness course. It's a self-paced preparation course. It takes approximately 10 hours to complete, and we strongly recommend that you complete this before you start your dissertation. Although it's not graded, it's going to help you um, with a lot of pre-information that you'll, you'll need for the, for the dissertation research projects. Our aim with the dissertation readiness course is to provide you with information about the requirements and structure of the dissertation. When you have completed the course, you'll have a good understanding of what types of research are available to you in order to help you find a topic of interest. So as a preparation checklist, um, we ask you that before you start your dissertation to check um, have you successfully completed the dissertation readiness course. Um, we also recommend that you review the online library training and referencing guide. Um, a lot of students will have already done the online library training at the start of their program, but we do recommend that if you have some time that you retake it at this stage because you will be using the online library extensively during your dissertation. So it's very important that you know how to navigate through it. Um, then the next thing you need to do is to, you need to decide on a topic you want to study and ensure that you have access to a site or sites where you can conduct the research or a secondary data source. And you should also find out what your local ethical requirements are for conducting research in your own country. Continuing the preparation for the dissertation module, you should uh, plan for a continuous nine month module as if uh, take the uh, the two month modules that you currently do uh, you have to work on on the premise that it's uh, it, it, it's these 20 hours for the, for the entire nine months if you do have a topic in mind think about what you want to investigate why and how it will inform other scholars in that field you should also plan to start your start end date with your student support manager you should also review your referencing guides and the online library training so here we come again to another um, pictorial overview of the dissertation roadmap. Um, so the dissertation roadmap, it starts off when you start on your dissertation with a research methods module. Um, this module takes eight weeks. 
Um, but the first four weeks are very similar to the regular models you do right now, um, where there's graded assignments, there'll be participation with fellow students, and um, you will be submitting uh, work throughout these first four weeks. And then from week four to week eight, um, what you will be working on uh, is in a separate class with your dissertation advisor, where you will be working on finalizing your dissertation proposal, getting your ethical review done, so that by the end of week eight, you can submit and hopefully get proposal approval. Um, we then continue onwards um, with the sort of research and writing phase of the dissertation. This is a, a bit more of an uh, individualistic phase of the dissertation, so uh, no more submission uh, of work um, or deadlines, um, but this is a time where you need to be in touch with your dissertation advisor regularly to let them know and uh, possibly also send them um, pieces of work that you've already done, the different chapters of your dissertation for review. And you will be um, requested to submit progress report in months five and seven of this phase. Then um, at the end, at month eight, so where we, um, one month before your final submission date, um, you will have the opportunity to submit a draft submission. Uh, there will be a draft Turnitin link for you to submit this work through so that you can then review the Turnitin report and make any necessary changes to ensure all your citing and referencing has been done correctly. And this will also allow your dissertation advisor one more month to comment and give and do a final review of the work before your final submission date at the end of month nine. Okay, let's move on to the dissertation uh, advisors. You've got uh, the academic and non-academic advisors. On the academic side, you've got the general dissertation instructor, also known as the GDI, and uh, they will be able to guide you during the actual research methods module. And then for the uh, majority of your dissertation period, you'll be working with a dissertation advisor known as the DA, and he'll be able to guide you all the way through to your submission. You've also got um, non-academic advice coming from your student support manager as usual and again they will be there throughout your entire dissertation period for any non-academic advice that you may need. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the research methods, methods module. So the duration of the research methods module is eight weeks and the module is conducted by the general dissertation instructor also known as the GDI. Um, you will have weekly assignments and deadlines for the first four weeks as it, uh, as it is structured in a similar fashion to a module with assignments and deadlines. And then the second four weeks you will be working with your DA to get proposal approval and there are no more weekly assignments. Um, but do keep in mind that the same sort of time commitment will be required because you will have to be working very closely with your dissertation advisor to get um, dissertation proposal approval. Uh, the research methods module is graded and it's worth 10% of your final dissertation mark. And the overall objective of the research methods module is to have your proposal approved. Okay, the DA or dissertation advisor is uh, one of the most important parts of your, your dissertation. Ideally, your dissertation advisor should be confirmed by week four. Um, you may ask to be matched with a particular DA. You should you should check this out with your student support manager. You can even look into this before you start your dissertation. But um, we will try to accommodate um, any requests you make. And uh, it, it may not be possible in, in some cases because some DAs could be oversubscribed. If you cannot find a suitable DA there, we, uh, we will look at the type of study you're intending to do and the subject matter, and we will suggest a, a dissertation advisor who has experience and expertise in that field. When you're linked to a dissertation advisor, you go into your own dissertation advisor class to work with your DA. The DA will respond to all messages within four days and any document submissions, including drafts, within 10 days. So let's talk a little bit about the draft proposal. Uh, the idea you bring to your research support class will be developed with the help of the GGI and then your DA into a four to five page proposal outline. Um, in addition to this, you must also complete the ethical approval document while developing your proposal. Most times, the expedited checklist will suffice. Um, at the University of Liverpool, you may apply for expedited approval if your research is using theoretical research, one, two, development of a computer system, three, publicly available data, four, secondary data which you have permission to use and which is anonymous, or five, collecting data from non-vulnerable adults on a non-sensitive subject. 
If your research meets none of the above criteria, then you will have to apply for full ethical committee approval, and the committee meets on a monthly basis. Let's talk about completing your proposal. The DA will also review your ethical approval document and provide agreement. Only then can a proposal be forwarded for approval. When your DA thinks it is ready, you can submit the proposal to the research method class for review by the faculty manager. The faculty manager, or FM as they're also known, will either approve this or they may make some recommendations for changes. The faculty manager and the DA will keep you informed of your progress. If changes are needed, then you must complete them and the, pros the proposal will need to be resubmitted to the RM class for review. When the FM does agree that your proposal is ready, she, will, she or he will make that approval. So once you've obtained proposal approval, you will now be working on your dissertation with the VA support. We will expect you to submit progress reports at the end of month five and the end of month seven of your dissertation. And this will allow both you and your DA to examine how well you're doing and whether or not you'll still be able to meet the nine month deadline. Um, your DA will review the chapters as needed, so don't be shy in asking for assistance. That's what they're there for. And we strongly recommend that one month before your deadline that you submit a full draft of your dissertation for review by your DA so they can provide you with all final comments. And we will also recommend that you submit a draft version through the draft Turnitin link, which will be there to allow you to then view the Turnitin report and ensure that all the work that you have is cited and referenced correctly before you submit your final version. Okay, now to the best bit, the dissertation submission. When you submit your final dissertation prior to the deadline, uh, after final submission, your dissertation advisor can no longer be approached for any guidance. Dissertations are evaluated by two independent assessors. Uh, you will not be informed of, these, informed of these grades at the time, however, until the Board of Examiners meet. In some cases, a third, assessor, a third assessor may be necessary. Your student support manager will contact you with your grade following the Board of Examiners meeting to inform you of your grade. The Board of Examiners meet three times a year. They meet in May, February and October. Please note that you will only be submitted to the Board of Examiners when all of your course fees are paid in full. Always keep your dissertation advisor and student support manager informed about your progress as you go. So then you've submitted your dissertation, you have received your grade and passed, and then that wonderful end of studies is coming up, which is graduation. And graduation is obviously a very important location. This is what you've been working towards for the entire course of your studies, and it's the culmination of all your hard work during your time at the University of Liverpool. Upon graduation, you will be invited to our campus in Liverpool to attend the graduation ceremony together with the on-campus students. And graduation takes place twice a year, in July and in December. OK, thank you. We look forward to helping you start your final steps in the journey towards your postgraduate degree. Thanks for the